Hello everyone, my name is Maz Barami from All From Research. Welcome to the seventh session of the Simplified Machine Learning Workflows with Anton Antonov. Those of you who are joining us for the first time, Dr. Antonov is an applied mathematician with more than 20 years of experience in algorithm development, natural language processing, and machine learning. Last time, Anton introduced the latent you know, semantic analysis workflow, and today he will elaborate more on that through a few examples. Handing over to you, Anton, looking forward to your seventh session. Uh, thank you, Matt. Thank you for the introduction. So in this, um, this session, we're going to, to concentrate on more or less three things. Um, the first one is... Uh, our, I hope, motivational example of a full-blown related semantic analysis workflow. Uh, then we're going to, to look into how related semantic analysis is done the hard way uh, through Mathematica, uh, built-in data and commands. Uh, then um, I'll show you the easy way using the, the so-called uh, LSA, LSA, uh, MON, which is the latest semantic analysis software monad. And um, here, um, and this is something I promised in the in the first session, briefly discussed. Uh, I have made a breakdown of the different data uh, we are going to use in this uh, uh, series of uh, latest semantic analysis sessions. Um, the last time we saw uh, briefly uh, Hamlet, uh, using Hamlet as an example, uh, today I'm going to use the movie reviews, movie reviews avail <clears throat> available through the curated data from the Wolfram, in the, in the Wolfram language. Um, I'm also going to use as a first example, the Raku documentation from GitHub. Uh, Raku uh, is the official name of Perl 6, uh, it's like Perl 5, and you know, in order to avoid confusion, it was renamed. So uh, Raku has been, um, there is a, this is um, the official website of, um, of Raku. Um, the documentation itself can be found um, in, uh, in GitHub, and I have taken it from them. I have ingested the documents so if I show you what uh, this uh, a document is, is basically the different, it's an association, right? It's like an association with different uh, documents that uh, use uh, uh, the, um, the so-called um, Perl pot six markdown language. You can see say title, subtitle and so forth. All right, and so uh, here, this is just, uh, um, natural language interface to the latent semantic analysis uh, software monad I mentioned, LSA MON. The reason I'm using this interface is because uh, it, should be, uh, it should be clear from the natural language commands listed here, ordered in, in this order, what exactly is happening, and I'm going to spell it out. So we took this uh, uh, documents uh, uh, data structure we created a new object, a latent semantic analysis uh, software monad object. This is what this command is. Then we're making a document term matrix. This is going to be explained in detail what exactly it is in uh, the hard way explanation. Then I'm showing the summary of this matrix. And I can see that the matrix has 371 documents and 24,353 words. After that, I have applied certain latent semantic indexing functions. Um, I hope I'll have the time to briefly explain what is the motivation between IDF. IDF stands for inverse document frequency. And um, after these uh, functions have been applied to the matrix, IDF, term frequency, and cosine, uh, I have extracted 36 topics using the non-negative matrix factorization method. Uh, the, these are the topics you see here in this table. So you can see, show the topics table with nine table columns. And basically, this is what is happening here. And uh, then uh, at the end, we show a thesaurus uh, of th statistical thesaurus entries for these uh, selected words regex, array, chars, role, and grammar. 
So this is the thesaurus here. All right, so let's look into the, uh, trying to convince you here why, you know, is this related semantic analysis working? Uh, well, I mean, we can see, for example, that many of the, um, many of the topics being extracted, they do actually have, uh, uh, they do belong to the same topic. Granted, this requires certain minimal uh, programming knowledge, but for example, topic six, in which we have iterator, array, elements. So Raku has lazy lists. So, you know, we have all this sec, it's basically a sequence and so forth. We can see that they belong to the same uh, group of, um, of uh, conceptually belong to the same um, group of notions. Uh, we, the promise and broken promise, it's interesting that um, uh, the creator of Raku, this is Larry Wall, uh, he's a linguist, so he, he made the language in such a way that it's both somewhat funny and also makes sense. So yeah, broken promises and so forth. Yeah, they do make actually sense. Promises actually for asynchronous uh, parallel computing. And you can see here this await, start, result, schedule, and so forth is related to that. Uh, further, I mean, I'm going to pick uh, one more uh, topic, which is uh, easy to uh, to explain. And let's, uh, let's look at, uh, say, I know, let me see. I mean, I, I know what this is, uh, but say signature placeholder, placeholder parameters. Yeah, this is more or less about uh, naming of functions. So regex or regular expressions. Uh, and yeah, you can see topic four, Rege regex, the regex ex regular expressions, they were invented by Perl and then were adopted in other languages. And so, of course, regex is also presented in Raku. And all this here we see in topic four, regex range match, they're about uh, matching strings. And so we can see, let's say, uh, also for regex, these are the so-called uh, statistical thesaurus entries. Now, as I mentioned, uh, or maybe more than just mentioned in the first uh, session, uh, there is a fundamental assumption behind related semantic uh, analysis, but words with similar semantic meaning, they have similar distribution into the, in the documents. And so this is what we observe here. So these words, they are similarly distributed. Now, it is important to keep in mind that this is a relatively coarse uh, grouping between the, 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 of the words. Like uh, I have 371 documents, and you can see, for example, here, but um, it, it is a little bit of a, a they, I could, if, if we could have easily split these documents into paragraphs, then the statistical thesaurus would have uh, been tighter. Right now, the statistical thesaurus is fairly similar to what we see in the topics. All right, so let's actually uh, go for the, uh, for the explanations the hard way. And um, for this, um, actually, it's probably you know um, good time to mention that uh, I did uh, submit uh, into the uh, Wolfram repository a function called uh, non-negative matrix factorization. Let me bring it up here. This is not approved yet, but uh, it's one of the workhorses behind dimension reduction both in my software monitor and in general, in related semantic analysis. Um, so very, uh, very, very uh, related function, independent component analysis. This is already approved. You can actually get it from the Wolfram function repository. Uh, and um, of course, both of them, both uh, functions should be, should be um, compared with singular value decomposition. I'm going to provide a link to this public uh, public cloud uh, um, my public cloud uh, deployment of this function. But uh, presumably within a week or two, it's uh, something that it should be found in the Wolfram function repository. All right, so um, I'm going to go through the um, the topics extraction. Let me just uh, uh, copy and paste some text here. So what we do here first is um, we're taking um, um, movie reviews from uh, uh, the Wolfram curated uh, data set, uh, example data for machine learning. 
if I uh, show the first uh, three or four, this is how they look. It's, you know, we have a, we have a review and this review has a label uh, positive and they're not all positives. They, some of these are uh, with negative. You can see that the words have been split in, uh, in such a way that a punctuation, it's also, you know, separated from the rest in order to make a, say, classifier or whatever from machine learning classifier for predicting the positive and negative uh, labels of these reviews. We're not doing this, we're not doing prediction. We actually try to see certain topics in these uh, movie reviews. The reason I picked uh, this set is that um, it's, uh, it has some nice functionality, some nice properties. So here I'm going to um, attach to, to the movie reviews, uh, we're going to have uh, a prefix, uh, the labels are going to have a prefix. Let me just show you. Uh, tag because I want to combine them with the movie reviews and then actually do uh, use C to be clearly to be seen in the topics, ex extracted topics, where which of these words actually come from the labels. I only have two labels, positive and negative. So, I mean, so far, this is nothing, nothing particularly uh, special, just uh, transforming data. I'm actually just going through the steps here and um, producing different. Uh, uh, doing different transformations. Uh, here we uh, concatenate uh, with the, the corresponding label and we make an association with um, uh, only uh, in order to be to, to be more um, not to waste time computational time let's pick uh, reviews which actually have non-trivial length and in this particular case they all probably all have more than 10 symbols length but in general this is something that has to be done uh, so I'm going to remove at this point from each uh, from each movie. I'm going to delete uh, the stop words. Actually, first I'm going to do the splitting, and then uh, split the re reviews, and then I'm going to uh, remove the stop words. So basically, right now my reviews look like say something like this. So the there's, a, there's an ID, and then there's a, you know there's a, these are individual words here and. Uh, you can see that the label is also part of uh, part of the words, all right. And so uh, the what I uh, there's several ways to proceed, but what I prefer doing is to convert the data in the so-called long form. And I'm going to probably expand on this a little bit. Like say, let's do something like this. And maybe let me see, can I do data set here? So. Basically, the different IDs we see here, they're paired with the corresponding words. This is what we are trying to do. This is what is the long form. And from the long form, um, I, I, want to, uh, I want to see which words are popular. Like some of the words are not that popular as we can see. And so, I actually want to select words which are met at least uh, in 20 reviews. So at this point, we're transforming the data. We have produced this long form. From this long form, I want to produce the document term matrix, which was used here. So uh, uh, so far, we have been just transforming the data. Here, I'm trying to figure out which of the, which of the words are popular enough if we look into this uh, Say, let me see if I do take largest. I mean, say a com a comma and uh, punctuation sign, the most popular, then the labels, of course, and we have even nearly even distribution of negative and, and positive, and then we see other, you know, other words which are most popular. So, uh, here I'm going to uh, actually try to, uh, to really take the, the popular words like filter out this LSA, uh, this uh, long form, LS long form uh, data structure. And now I'm, uh, what I'm doing here, it's, uh, it is a contingency matrix. This contingency matrix, it's an, well, that's a function in, uh, in Wolfram uh, repository. I submitted it uh, some time ago. Cross tabulation is one of the essential functions, I would say. Basically we're looking into co-occurrences between words and IDs, this is what is happening here. I could have done this data structure in a different way, but just to kind of uh, be, let me show you what exactly this, uh, uh, 
this looks like. And um, this matrix, of course, I can represent it also as a data set. So here we see a data set representation. So I mean, you can see, say, review 485 uh, has uh, the words uh, couple and basically what's it, everything else has been either a stop word or some word which is not popular. It has been less than 20 reviews and so forth. Uh, so uh, the matrix itself, uh, in order to in order to Ant visualize it, Anton. I need to use an additional function. So let me see how well. Yeah, so this is before, how the function is. Before you move on, just quick question. Yeah. Any reason that you choose number 20? Like, was there like, you know, would it be any difference if we choose, I don't know, fairly? Um, well, uh, first, uh, yes, very good question. It's, uh, well, this is uh, trial and error a little bit. And that's why actually we have this uh, workflow spelled in this way, because we might actually run it several times and change different parameters here. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, just, uh, just from, uh, uh, if we reason uh, with the data as this, we obviously want to find certain intersections. Uh, the, the words, they need to have some statistical representation uh, significant enough to be considered in the topics. Obviously, a word, if it belongs to only one, uh, to only one review, it's useless. We cannot, we cannot use it for anything. But so it needs to be at least in, ten, in two reviews. But then, you know, I might ask myself, look, I mean, if this in less than 10, you know, 20 reviews, maybe that word is not, it's not that, it's not, it's not significantly represented. And if I don't like the results or I like the results, I might revisit this, uh, this uh, part here and uh, take more, uh, more words or less, uh, sorry, take words with uh, bigger or lesser representation. But obviously, if a word is only presented in one document, there is no reason to use it. Thanks. All right, and so, um, so here we are, you know, visualizing the contingency matrix. You can see this uh, big, um, uh, thick stripe. It's obviously coming from, say, it's either one of the popular. It's one of this popular. Uh, it's probably for the dot. You know, like I mean, I could have removed the punctuation sign, but fine. I mean, at this point, I, I haven't, I haven't done that. All right. So one of the interesting things to look into when we are looking into this is to actually uh, find the so-called uh, uh, to to look into the so-called Pareto statistic, Pareto distribution statistic. So this object here, it's uh, it's it has a sparse matrix, sparse array, but it also it has. Um, uh, it has the row names and the column names, and there are quite a lot of row names, but the column names correspond to, to the words which we consider. And so um, what I can do is that uh, if I, I want to see uh, what is the presence of, this, uh, of these words. And so we can see here typical Pareto uh, principal manifestation. 20% of the words correspond to 60% of all associations between review and words. So basically 60% of all words correspond to 20% unique words. And so this actually can be used as a motivation to, um, to actually do, to apply the inverse document frequency. The inverse document frequency, uh, Pareto principle is also very related to the so-called zip uh, Zips law. I'm not going to go into details here, but uh, the here, you know, this the matrix I found. I'm going to uh, I'm going to transform it in such a way that I'm applying this uh, long uh, this inverse document frequency metric. Also, I want to uh, normalize the rows the rows of the of the matrix because of of the matrix. Because with the factorizations we're going to do, we want to have some uniformity. So each row of this matrix now, it's going to have uh, uh, norm one. Now let me see bravely here uh, if I do. So you just get a bunch of ones. Um, all right, so um, the, at this point, we're very, uh, very close to making the computations. But in order to speed up the computations, I'm actually going to take a sample. This is actually. This is more a uh, didactic step. It's not, I mean, the sample is, I'm just taking half of the, half of the 
the movies of the movie reviews. So it's not such a big reduction. I just want to mention it as a, uh, but uh, it, it needs to be considered, you know, as a potential step. Let me see this here. It's going to, oh, well, uh, yeah, something here I did not, I guess uh, I did not uh, uh, produce, but it's actually important for the later on uh, what we're going to do. So let me see what it's, uh, what is the, the problem here I have. And so simply um, I need to reevaluate my uh, definition uh, from uh, which I submitted to, uh, to, to Wolfram Research because it has uh, this uh, option which I want to use. And so, uh, and to some extent that's probably better. Um, all right, so this is um, going to use um, that new definition and it's going to use this normalization. So at this point, we, we have uh, these uh, two matrices, this, the original matrix, uh, not the original, but the one which we sampled. It, should, it is, it is uh, represented uh, with, um, as a matrix product of these two matrices. So this here should be, uh, should be a formula. And let me edit it as such. Uh, right, so I can use this uh, to uh, to uh, to extract the topics. This uh, this here, the matrix H, is basically the new representation. The dimension I have uh, the the topics I'm extracting uh, twenty four, and I'm using this uh, 12, uh, uh, 12 steps. So uh, what I'm trying to do here is that. Uh, I'm saying I have this matrix, which is uh, on the on the right side, on the left side, which is uh, which has the number of rows, my the number of reviews I'm considering, and the number of columns. It has uh, the number of topics I have chosen, and I also have uh, the right factor, which is uh, the, the matrix H, which has this uh, 24. Uh, topics again I have chosen and as, as columns it has the words which we have uh, pre-selected here I mean we can see this 800 words or this 830 these are the words which uh, state after we made the contingency matrices and so forth all right so now what we see here in this table is the um, uh, uh, topics and the related the topics uh, being uh, produced by using this uh, uh, this topic extraction, and so I mean, you can see, for, for example, topic nine with nine with uh, director, uh, cast, and so forth. You know, it uh, seems to to make sense. We also see what uh, like uh, why I added the prefix to this uh, to the labels negative and positive. I wanted to actually see in the topics they participate. What exactly? What, what kind of things they're associated with. And here I say uh, tag negative associated with dull and you know exercise performance minutes, whatever. Um, so anyway, um, it looks like documentaries you know, have uh, uh, positive reviews, uh, beautiful recommenders, re uh, be beautiful <laughs> documentaries and, and so forth. Now we can look into the, um, into the statistical thesaurus. And uh, let's actually take the statistical thesaurus here. Again, some lengthy code. And I, um, I have pre-selected some words. You can see, like say, book, amusing, and etc. cetera. But um, you know, there are also some words which are randomly selected here. So um, uh, yeah, let's look into say, uh, like say, bad. Bad is associated with screen, big, so forth performances, good is associated with. Uh, interestingly, I don't, I don't, I don't see how. But let me actually see something is wrong here. Ah, yeah, we're going to, we're going to see this. It's just not. Uh, this is just not. Just a moment, some mistake here. So, 
Um, yeah, I mean, we we can see what is the statistical tesoros, what are the associations where is uh, uh, where things uh, are going. Again, we actually probably I selected uh, two uh, too few topics, and it is a good idea probably to revisit this and uh, do either apply different uh, different uh, st different uh, LS LSI related semantic indexing functions or to do some uh, reweighting or to do some stemming. Actually, with the stemming, let me demonstrate it here uh, before going to the easy way of, uh, of, ex of uh, doing all this. So the stemming, I'm going to, to make it in two steps. And let me find the best way to uh, insert it. So port a stem. It's, um, let me demonstrate here, if I take uh, something like say, a word like say, faultful, it's going to be stemmed to fault and so forth. Uh, since our reviews are not that, not that long, not that big, it actually does make sense to do stemming. And uh, in uh, some situations, stemming is, stemming is detrimental. Imagine like say, chemistry or medical articles, if you do stemming, um, you know, the, uh, removing the, just looking at the root of the words, not ignoring the prefixes and suffixes, it's not a good idea when it comes to biological, uh, medical, and uh, say chemistry type of uh, literature. But in this particular case as movies, this is just fine. So let me redo everything here. We can see that actually uh, the number of the words change. Some other things actually uh, uh, changed uh, too. And uh, I really have uh, certain hopes that this should work uh, more or less uh, without much uh, glitches. So here we uh, wait for the, for the computations to finish. We get uh, similar. And now here we see that the topics, uh, topics look uh, uh, yeah, differently, right? So we, uh, this uh, interestingly, this also the portal stem, the built-in function uh, also stemmed the tags, the labels, positive and negative. Now you can see here how funny is uh, uh, like funny, funny est, and that's why we have this funny it has been associated with uh, uh, in this uh, in these topics. And now let's actually try to do this. Although I'm surprised this works because I actually need to do uh, words uh, data. And then port a stem. And something is uh, a miss here. And I'm going to close the bracket and see what do I get here. Right. Okay, so yeah, and we more or less see now. Tesoros in this Tesoros extraction, we see you know things we would we would expect, like say uh, you know positive being associated with powerful, beautiful portrait, uh, negative the tag negative with dull, and discussing of the script and the mess and so forth and um, uh, and, and so forth. All right. So all right. So how is this done? Uh, how is this done the easy way? And uh, I, although I probably have the, the code somewhere here, I'm going to just type it in. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to use uh, the movie, the movie associations, which I already produced. Let me see, actually, this is already split it. So I don't want that. I want the, the one which is not split. So I'm taking, going to take uh, this. So I'm going to take the movie reviews. I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to make the um, the document term matrix. And here, initially, I'm not going to do stemming. I'm going to do automatic uh, automatic uh, stop words. And uh, further, I'm going to do to apply the um, um, LSI functions, namely IDF and um, Term frequency 
and cosine. Now I'm uh, I'm ready to do my uh, topic extraction. And since we are using, like, say, 24 topics, actually, let me spell out. Uh, there are two signatures here. Uh, I'm going to use the one which uh, spells out uh, the parameters. And so 24. And here, uh, to what um, Matt asked, like, the minimum number of documents. I want to say 20. And uh, the method I would like to use is uh, non negative matrix factorization and max steps, say uh, 20. And now I want to uh, show the topics uh, table. And with, uh, say, number of uh, Table columns eight. All right, so I actually want to to assign this to something like say movie movie reviews and see how far we'll go. All right, so. I did not uh, put enough uh, echoing uh, between the different steps. And uh, that's why here we actually, this is taking disproportionately um, a lot of time. But you can also see that I did not, uh, I did not change the, I did not subsample uh, the reviews. And there are some other things which I stipped as steps, as, uh, as the different steps here. And so um, now the topics here, because we're using the full amount of data, right? They actually do have somewhat better, you know, they, they do look somewhat better. And we say like say dark, disturbing, so forth, right? And other things. Uh, so uh, performance is positive and so forth. Cast uh, like let's look into the um, let's look into the statistical thesaurus, and that's why I assigned this to uh, to a particular object. And so I'm going to do uh, echo uh, statistical thesaurus, and I'm going to again spell out the the parameter here, and I'm going to use say uh, film movie director bad good i think that's enough and so here yeah we we basically can see uh the statistical thesaurus which uh, has been produced uh for this uh, for these words all right well um this um there's several uh as I said, this is the easy way. I mean, you can see in this particular uh, this particular specification, a lot of the steps here, which I I had to type in, and like do like say, especially splitting of the words, stemming of the words, using uh, deleting the stop words, making the contingency matrices. Uh, and uh, actually printing out the different tables that correspond to different to different um, uh, topics and uh, thesauruses, that's actually not a trivial amount of code. And so this uh, monad, software monad, it's supposed to give you give easy access to uh, making this. I'm in order to to speed up the computations. I'm going to reduce um, the the movie, the movie is taken here, say to something like say 2000. Uh, in order to, because I plan to run this several times for illustration purposes, I'm going to put some seat random here. And here now the number of topics, I mean, I can increase, for example, uh, the number of, um, uh, the number of documents uh, in which I want to have the representation. And I'm going to add uh, uh, also statistical, uh, also some statistics of the document term 
uh, term matrix. And so this should be much faster. And we just simply don't have uh, topics that's actually shouldn't be happening. All right, so uh, this time we really, I really undersampled the whole, uh, that's not, that's really not good. Um, I undersampled the whole set and I'm this uh, using uh, 200 documents, like as a minimum set is just, uh, it's just not, not good for producing topics. Now we have, you know, we, we have uh, somewhat better representation. I'm going to return back to the 24 topics here. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, so uh, the idea behind this is that uh, we, we need to execute this workflow several times in order to see what exactly is happening. I might try to change, say, uh, the method with which I'm doing the, uh, the, the dimension reduction. And you can see that, uh, say, with uh, using the dimension reduction, singular value decomposition, it's much faster. But also, we, we might have hard time interpreting what this mixture of negative and positive uh, coordinates uh, means. Uh, so that's why it, the preference, it, we would prefer non-negative matrix factorization. But non-negative matrix factorization, as I mentioned in the previous uh, lectures, can actually uh, produce um, the topics, they are going to be shuffled. And although this, I would expect the same words and you know to appear in the, the topics to reappear, they might not be in the same order. Say this bad negative idea and etc. If I execute, actually this is going to appear again because I put the seed random. But if I reevaluate this um, now, I mean I'm going to have somewhat different, somewhat different representation. This is actually, there's another step here. I obviously made, uh, uh, I changed, changed the sampling here. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that it's, uh, we, the monad here, it's supposed to uh, simplify multiple executions of this workflow by changing different parameters, by observing what's, what, what are the results which are produced. And from those uh, trying to figure out uh, uh, like better parameters, like say, do we need to use a uh, larger, larger amount of topics? Uh, do we, is this say 4,000 uh, uh, reviews? Are they really representative of what's going on and so forth? Um, all right, so my next, um, let me see in the plan here, which I was uh, wanted to follow, I did mention that uh, I'm going to, to show this uh, fundamental transformations of the text, the bag of, bags of words model. This is when I split it, the words, you know, into this is this. Uh, when I made the splitting of each of the uh, reviews into individual words, this is what is the bag of words. I mean, right now, every movie is basically a bag of words. I completely ignore the sequential order between the words. Um, yeah, after that, I, I'm deleting the stop words. I might do stemming. And so let's actually uh, probably look into some uh, other, um, other topic here. Like say, you know, uh, I actually like this uh, for the last, for the next five minutes, eat your own dog food. So <clears throat> what does this mean? Um, eating your own dog food is, um, that's interesting, but I'll skip it for now. Well, since we're doing data science and we're data scientists, uh, for example, this is one of the first time I did it <clears throat> in the Mathematica Stack Exchange. Somebody asked the question, uh, should we, should we, when we answer, um, Mathematical Stack Exchange questions. To what degree um, the uh, the people who answer should uh, should go into details of statistical explanations? And um, I took a bunch of comments to the original question and made some statistical analysis. 
and I said that yes, we should actually uh, sermon. This though, uh, is, it's a little bit of a contract example getting the data. I have a better example here, which is with the similar idea. So uh, after being a guest lecturer in uh, in a, in data science or big data uh, big data for health uh, care class in uh, Stony Brook, uh, New York University. Uh, I was asked uh, a bunch of questions. Uh, the students were asked to prepare five, uh, five, five to 10 questions uh, to me. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, after the last lecture I gave, I, there was half an hour I was supposed to answer uh, the questions. You can see what I have, like say, uh, 99, uh, 99 type of questions, they're like, some of them are very short, some of them are more detailed. Now, obviously, I don't have the time to answer all of the questions. Actually, many of them also repeat. So it's not it's not necessarily, I don't know, I cannot probably easily demonstrate this, but it's not necessarily a good idea to go one by one anyway. Um, and so uh, the interesting, I, I mean, oh, trivial idea, it depends how you look at it, is to use related semantic analysis and figure out which are the most important questions. And so here you can see I'm using this standard uh, uh, standard uh, pipeline uh, from the latest semantic analysis uh, software monad. I have extracted eight topics because I think this is a very specialized type of class. So I don't see more than eight topics uh, uh, make make sense to 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 do. But the topics here are not that important. The important is that after we have made the representation. I can actually figure out what are the most important, uh, I have a way to figure out what are the most important uh, uh, questions. Now, my way of figuring it out is to actually make this kind of matrix. This, uh, okay, let me reevaluate this. Uh, and with this, uh, this bipartit matrix, I'm basically running some sort of algorithm uh, so-called centrality, like say page rank centrality algorithm, and uh, the the words with uh, the words uh, with um, which are most important, they're going to be in the most important questions, and the questions which are most important, they're going to have the most important words. It's somewhat, uh, it might sound somewhat cyclical, but this is how page rank, for example, uh, can be applied in this particular situation. And I have found uh, certain. Uh, number of uh, of questions which I found to be uh, to be useful. I can also with this uh, graph visualization, I can go further and visualize uh, communities and etc. Like in this particular case, we can see that um, this can be actually quite powerful because uh, you know were different were related words. They actually in related subgraphs. But back to to here. Imagine that this is. I'm not stemming the words, but if I stem the words, I might actually have. Uh, very different outcomes, and um, and with usually with this kind of small data sets and relatively short texts, uh, stemming of the words can have some dramatic changes into uh, what is going on. So, uh, so you can see here that uh, the big concern was that actually languages like R and Mathematica or Wolfram languages in that. Uh, they're actually harder to, to figure out, but then, you know, why we're, why we're doing whatever we're doing and say, ah, we're not doing same Python, uh, et cetera. So uh, there were some, uh, the questions were like that, but notice how different, uh, different the results look if I don't, uh, if I, if I'm using stemming as I'm showing here, and if I do not use stemming. And it is a little bit of a question, uh, which one I, I would uh, prefer to, uh, to select an answer. All right, I think uh, we are close to uh, the the time boundary of this session. Thank you, Anton. Uh, just one quick question. Can you comment on the importance of max steps? How sensitive is our you know, yeah. so, classification to the max steps? All right. Well, very good. Um, <laughs> that's actually, in general, uh, if I if I use non-negative matrix factorization, I don't need to use too many steps. This particular small data set, so let me actually let it run uh, for longer number of, of steps. But it's actually not, it doesn't, it doesn't produce particularly better results. And some, at some point it gets overtrained. So the non-negative matrix factorization, which I'm using here, it's uh, the, the landscape, it, 
it goes through, it's an optimization method, it's a steepest descent type of uh, method, but the norm it uses and the landscape it peruses in order to find the, the factors, it can be very, um, it, it can it can it have uh, can have quite a lot of valleys like quite a lot of local minima and that's why it's a good idea to run it several times and there's some parameters to to change in the uh, you know in the non-negative matrix factorization i might i usually very rarely in the practice i run non-negative matrix factorization for more than 20 steps some of your original question like about minimum number of documents you see i actually obviously if i choose if I choose uh, less than two, it doesn't make sense. Here I have chosen two, but a, a, a word in order to be considered here, it needs to be at least in a, in a two documents, which something like kind of makes sense. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you know we could wrap up our session. Thanks a lot, yeah. Anton. Uh, you are watching the seventh session of the Simplified Machine Learning Workflows with Anton Antonov. You can find your recorded videos on the Wolfram Research YouTube channel. You can also interact directly with Anton through the Wolfram community. Thank you for watching and have a good one.